it does not sit like that, okay? It sits in this, arc, this precarious position where it is an slightly anterior, slightly lateral, or mostly anterior lateral, but also slightly superior, okay? The, the upper portion, this sticks out further. The idea is this, the inferior edge sticks out a little further than this superior edge, so it sits like that, okay? So what that means is, if I do just an inferior guy, if I take my humerus and just glide it inferiorly, I am going to bump into myself. In order to do a true inferior glide, I need to push not only down, but slightly out, lateral. So inferior and slightly lateral. That's what I mean by that, okay? For a posterior glide, again, it sits like this. If I push straight down to the floor, I'm gonna run into myself again. The humerus is gonna hit that posterior lip of the, of the um, glenoid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not just gonna push posterior, but also slightly, slightly. lateral. So posterior glide, I gotta go posterior and actually <coughs> slightly lateral, okay? For the anterior glide would be just the opposite. Now, if I was gonna push up, I won't run into myself, but I'm not parallel, I'm not running along parallel with the joint, which we say is, is yields the best results and is also the most comfortable. So whenever I wanna do an anterior glide for the um, humerus, I want to go anterior and slightly medial. Anterior and slightly medial. So that's where the slightly comes in because it's not that, and that's the importance of knowing where is my joint plane and orienting myself to that. Because once you see that, now, now it becomes much easier. So when I'm actually here with the arm, and I know this is the wrong side, okay, I, I got that. But <laughs> that's because, and because we got videotape in here. Um, again, that's how, that's how my glides want to go, okay? They gotta do that. If not, I'm just gonna bump into myself. I'm just gonna bump into myself, okay? So what does that look like with a person? So does someone wanna lay down here and offer me their arm? I'll sit, I'll do it, I'll do it. If you can take your shirt off, please. Oh, thank, thank you, you very so much. Was <laughs> that up? Yes, yes. <laughs> you guys are terrible. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I say in for spinatus, no, nothing. Like <laughs> I'm up like nope. the fonts here, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> very important. Um, very important. Uh, the words for your skill of doing mobilizations, oscillations, joint mobility, is you have to have your hands as close to the articulation as possible, okay? What that means is I cannot do joint mobilizations, oscillations from out here when the joint is way up here, okay? You have to be comfortable with the idea that you are going to get your hands in as close to the joint as possible, okay? What position, if I'm going to do an assessment, what is the position that we do our assessments in? Open pack. The open pack position or rest position for the, for the, the glenohumeral joint, what position is that? 55 degrees of abduction and then horizontal abduction. 35 degrees horizontal abduction, right? So, so I need to abduction and horizontal, so about here, okay? I say about here because this is what the textbook says it is. But, you can relax your arm, if Kyle has a little bit of t extra tightening in his pecs or maybe his, his bony osseous anatomy is just a couple of degrees off than what the textbook says, I may not be right in it. But I know this is in and around the range, okay? And if you're, obviously if you're ever asked a question on a, on a test, what position would you do your joint assessment and you gotta know it's that open pack position, you have to know those, those numbers, right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna start moving him different directions and just start to get a feel for which direction do I feel like he has the most movement. So what you'll notice is I'm kind of, I kind of move and manipulate his arm around a little bit. I'm looking for what position do I feel like he gets the most movement in. So let's say it's about in and around here. If I want to assess his posterior glide, I need to do a posterior and slightly, wow. right? So I'm not gonna push straight down to the floor, but what I'm doing here is I'm just coming posterior and slightly lateral. And what I'm really trying to feel is how much does his humerus move in the scapula? It is not, notice it is not a big movement. Because if I do a big movement, I'm moving his sternoclavicular joint, his acromioclavicular joint, his sternoclavicular joint. I am not interested in those joints right now. I am interested in what his glenohumeral joint is doing, okay? 
Remember, this is a grand total of a very few millimeters of movement, okay? Dr. Bertrand on her on her intro slides was kind of quantifying it for you. Maybe three to five millimeters. That is not a lot of movement, right? But I'm just getting an assessment. <clears throat> Tight, um, hypermobile, hypomobile, or just right. Tight to loose, just right. Okay. So that would be posterior glide. I can do that that way. Anterior glide, I'm just going to do the opposite in the opposite direction. I'm not just lifting straight up but I'm coming up and slightly medial. medial. <coughs> Again, just trying to get an assessment for how much does that move. Inferior glide, and this is my own <laughs> personal way of doing things, I always like to put my hand on top and then try not just straight down inferior, but inferior and lateral, lateral. right? So I gotta have his arm in the right position and just trying to get a feel for how much does that move inferiorly? Okay. Posterior, anterior, inferior, superior. What do you guys think? Yeah, not really something we test. You just jamming the humeral head into the chromium. Also, we're talking about if a superior glide may be adduct if adduction was that was lacking, that would be an inferior roll with a superior glide. I don't run into many adduction issues. Most people have, you know, even in the worst conditions, they manage to get their arm down to their side, right? That's where, that's where they'll hold it. So don't run into that that often. The last thing I might want to look at, though, is the distraction, okay? Distraction now, remember, we, we named all the glides. Inferior, for um, abduction, inferior glide. For internal rotation, a posterior glide. For extension and external rotation, an anterior glide. What about distraction? What does that help fix? What motion? all of them it is a general stretch of the entire capsule where with particular glides an inferior glide you may only be stretching a particular portion of the capsule with the distraction the idea is you are going to end up stretching the first most tight portion of the ligament of, of the capsule and then as the as you continuously stretch that out you might engage another region so the idea is that the Distraction is actually a good assessment for the entirety of the capsule itself. So if, if that faces superior, lateral, and slightly anterior, I need to pull that joint in that direction. And just get in a sense in my head too much, too little, <laughs> just right. Now what's going? What did I miss now? So oh, you're watching. I got a text message and it came oh, up on my watch. Okay. <laughs> That's all we want you to do right now is get on individuals 